All right, moving on to our third and final cardiac health-related supplement of this conversation, red yeast rice. What is it, Ashley, and what's it used for? Okay, red yeast rice is three words. Red like the color, yeast like the baking constituent, and rice like the food. I always say that when patients talk to me about it, like three words, red yeast rice. (laughs) It's also known as went yeast, which is kind of interesting. I didn't know that before. It's a natural supplement. It's got an active constituent that's a weak HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, right, like a statin. That's called monocolon K. It appears to be chemically identical to lovastatin, although the studies haven't really shown. Oh, I'm going to jump ahead there. It appears to be chemically identical to lovastatin. And the typical dosing, it's actually pretty high dose. It's 1,200 milligrams per day, and that can be once or twice per day. So they come in 600 milligrams in the um, capsule or tablet. So I'm going to ask you if it works. It's interesting that chemically it seems to be identical to lovastatin. Does it work like lovastatin? This is what I found pretty interesting. I assume that if it was chemically identical to lovastatin, we would see a significant drop in the LDL or the total cholesterol or relative risk reduction. And it does appear to reduce the LDL and the risk reduction and the relative risk, but not as much as a statin. As a quick side note, we don't we can take this out. Do you know why? Like, do they know why it doesn't I have the really, same effect? I don't know. I couldn't really find that. I just think it's maybe like not as pure. It's probably okay. got like some other stuff, but I don't. I, interesting. No, so I don't know interesting. why. No, yeah. no, that's totally fine. Um, are there any side effects for red yeast rice that we should know about? Similar to a statin, people could actually have some muscle pain, some rhabdo, even hepatotoxicity, which are kind of like on the more serious end, but if people are taking really high doses. Milder reactions might be some GI upset, little headache, maybe some rash. Are there any drug-drug interactions? Absolutely. With this one, I think the best way to think of it is if someone was taking lovastatin and it would interact with that, it will interact with this. So, you know, certain any medication that is going to interact with the statin or have some hepatotoxicity, we need to really consider with red yeast rice. Would anybody be on a statin and red yeast rice? I don't think any of my patients are. I'm just thinking anecdotally, most of them would take it in the place of a statin. Absolutely. Yep. No, people should not be taking both. Any other safety concerns? Should not take this in pregnancy or lactation, just like a statin. And again, with a hepatic disease, we should avoid it. So Ashley, are you recommending red yeast rice to your patients? This one's tricky. I have a number of patients who really don't want to take a statin, as I'm sure all of you do. And if they want to try red yeast rice, I'm okay with it. But I usually tell them, like, you know, the studies haven't really shown about the total risk reduction, and we don't know how it will affect your numbers. Try it for two to three months. Come back. Have your hepatic function done. Have your lipid panel. And see if it helps. And I was surprised, even though the literature really shows that it probably will reduce cholesterol levels. I haven't seen that in my practice. I really don't see people's numbers dropping significantly taking three, six months of red yeast rice. I'll share a story about red yeast rice in particular. A few years ago, I went to a journal club conversation at my institution with the chair of cardiology and a clinical pharmacist who works in the field of cardiology. And we talked all about red yeast rice. And the overwhelming take-home message from that journal club discussion was that you just don't know what you're actually getting in your red yeast rice over-the-counter supplement, something you and I have talked about as a broad concept with supplements, Ashley, time and again, that you, if it's not regulated by the FDA, you may not know what you're actually getting. If you look at the National Institutes of Health's fact sheet on red yeast rice, you learn some really interesting things that go along with this. Um, The first is they say it's impossible for consumers to know the amount of monocolon K in red yeast rice products. They looked at a 2017 review looking at 28 brands of red yeast rice from mainstream retailers in the U.S., and none of them included the quantity of monocolon K on the label. It wasn't detected at all in two of the brands. And in the other 26 brands that did contain any monocolon K, the quantity ranged more than 60-fold within the standard capsule that people were taking. So right there, you know, there's sort of the you just don't know what you're getting. 
The other big takeaway when I looked at this particular resource is something else you and I have talked about, Ashley, with supplements, which is sometimes there are contaminants. And in this particular case, they said that some red yeast rice products contain a contaminant called citronin, which can be nephrotoxic potentially. Here they looked at a 2021 analysis of 37 different red yeast rice products, and only one had citronin levels below the maximum level currently set by the European Union. Four of the products that were contaminated with it were labeled as citronin-free. So those are some very specific examples, but I think it just speaks to a larger point, which is always worth repeating, that you have to be a little bit skeptical as to what you're actually receiving. And like you just mentioned earlier in this conversation, it's important for us to look if we are going to encourage supplement use of any kind, it's important for it to have that USP verify check mark on it. And I feel like I'm harping on this all the time on this podcast, but also like with my students and in my clinic, we have to ask because people are taking supplements and not thinking that it's a big deal. They might be taking red yeast rice and then we recommend a statin and then they could go into liver failure, God forbid. So we have to ask and we need to really take the extra step and do the research and educate patients when it comes to supplements, because like you said, they can be super dangerous and maybe not even effective. 